In this video, we're going to be working on the Chapter 6 exercises. And I'm looking at the very first one that's assigned, which is called, uh, well, it's Problem 2, Part A, which is Count by Threes. Uh, this is a pretty simplistic little uh, assignment, and hopefully uh, you'll find it that way, too. Uh, I'm going to be working in an Eclipse, so I am going to create myself a new project folder. And we'll call it Chapter 6. And then we're going to create a new class file inside there. And uh, we're going to call this Count by Threes. And we will need a main method. All right. Now, we know this chapter is about looping. Now the question is, what's the best loop for the job? Well, let's talk about what kind of loops there are. What kind of loops are there? While, for, and do's. Now, you're going to find that people that tend to get more advanced in their programming skills, as a general rule of thumb, end up preferring for loops for doing things that are going to execute specific amount of times and depending on when the logic needs to be checked. And that's what I'm going to use in this scenario. And this will be actually pretty simple. I'm just going to go right to creating the loop. And let's start with um, i equal to 3. And you'll see my logic in just a second. And then while I, what are our instructions here, I suppose? All right. Go from 3 to 300 inclusive. Inclusive meaning 300's included, right? Does that work? Now the question is, what are we going to increment by each time? Ty, can you hear me? Well, should I tell you what my thinking is? Because every time I go through the loop, I'm thinking that I'm just going to do a system out print line and just output I. So the first time it goes through, it's going to output what? Three. That, that's my, my thinking. I mean, I guess you could put zero in there if you want, and you can do multiplication. Right? Yeah, well, I could increment it by three. Right. So how would I do that? Because we're used to doing like plus plus, right? But you said, yeah, there you go. So I could do plus, oops, plus equals what? Right? So each time I add three to it. Well, that's, that's the challenge part, right? All right. Uh, count from 3 to 300 inclusive, and then starts a new line after every multiple of 30. Okay, so remember back to our math operators? I think there's a math operator that might serve us well here. So if we wanted, after every multiple of 30, what math can we use to make sure we go to the next line? Now I'm going to start the statement and I'll see if you guys can help me finish it. Now since we're going to have multiple statements here, I'm going to add some curlies for the for loop. And I'm going to put in an if statement. And then I'm going to check i. What am I going to check to see if it gets up to 30, right? Well, okay, that works fine for the first one. But then what about the subsequent ones? So really, we should probably be like dividing by 30. But wait, 
really we need to figure out after we've reached 30 or a multiple of 30. Is it the, is it the you got it. So if you mod by 30, and the result is equal to what? Zero. Zero. There's no remainder. So if I divide into it and it's like 33 and there's a remainder, no good. If I divide into it and it's 60, there's no remainder. And in that scenario, then Yeah, and then the trick there, and I think I heard Christian say it, is just to do a print line with nothing inside of it, and it moves down to the next line. But really, this... Yeah, you can do that too. Nope. Yeah, well, yeah, it works essentially the same way. Because empty quotes are the same as nothing. Nothing, there's nothing. All right, and that's it. Too simple, right? It should be it. Let's see if uh, our code works. Might be helpful. 30, 60, 90, 120. You know what would be nice is if we did this. Or a couple spaces, something like that. Let's try that again. That's better. Now we can see all the individual numbers, and we can see that it does count up to 300 pretty easily, and that every multiple of 30 moves us to the next line. Okay, the next part of the exercise is to do this count by anything. And we're going to modify what we have, and then we're going to allow the user to enter the value to count by. Absolutely. And then after every 10 values, uh, we'll do a new line. So those are kind of the parameters there. So one thing that we know we're going to do um, is we are going to add an input mechanism. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new class file here and call it count by anything and instead of reinventing the wheel I'm just going to copy all my code over and then just modify it all right now we are going to need to ask the user for input so right away we should know that we need a scanner Thank you. Every single time. <laughs> Inherited channel? No. All right. And there's our import. And then let's do a prompt. Um, system. Yeah, that, that's because of the, it assumes that you're going to type certain things, like it does what, like, most... What is that for, though, is, is what I'm asking, the why... Oh, um, because it assumes, like, you're going to put in some sort of a variable that matches that. Be in there? Like, it's consistently oh. be, like... Oh, you know, no, no, see what it does right here? <laughs> it's putting in a Boolean, basically, oh, by so default. That's, okay, that's what it is. All right, and then we want to grab that value and put it somewhere. So let's uh, create an int, call it uh, num, right? Uh, what are we going to call this? Input dot next int. All right, and then it's going to do its work. Now, what we need to do is change 
some of the structure down here to match what we just did. So guide me through what I should do. Okay. Don't spoil my fun. I'll try it. I to zero in the increments in L. Set I to zero. Yeah. And the increment I at the end three change to five. What do you get? Well, I, uh, that's a good question. I guess that's up to us. What do we let them count up to? Thousand? Five hundred? We can pick a value. You can even get more clever and you can make it a multiple of the item that you're using. So for example, we went up to 300. So you could make it a multiple of, so if they enter a 10, like 10 times that. Right. But let's just, let's just pick a value for right now just to, to work with it. Um, all right, so if we start counting at zero, is that gonna work right? Before we were counting by three, so we put a three here. What should I put here? No. I'll tell you what, let's put zero in and see what happens. Well, doesn't it say the applicant enters a value to count by? Yep. <laughs> well, we're putting that in here. Can we put this okay. in num? Can you put num? No, yeah, it will have to start it as a one. Otherwise, if they input 10, the first number will be nine. Okay, you guys are really, you're close to the solution here, so we got to kind of massage it out of you. No. <laughs> All right. When we started before, this person's going to input a number to count by. Mm -hmm. Could be 3, could be 10. Mm -hmm. If you look at our previous example, we're counting by 3s. Where is it? I, I love hearing the logic here. Everybody's out loud logic. All right. So here's the deal. Maybe I could just call this I. Could I do that? All right. Then I don't have to declare it here. And then, or no, actually, let's call it num. That's okay. Yeah, if, if you declare it above the loop, you can just use it in the loop. All right, let's still use i, but what should we set this value to? Does that make sense to you guys? So, you know what's really fun to do is let's just run it how it is right now and see what it does. Enter a value to count by, let's put in 3. It's okay. okay. <laughs> I'm putting in a number that we've used before, and it did it, and it got up to 500 and stopped. So that's right. Okay. But our directions now are, and so I think basically our, this is okay, and this is okay. It's counting up correctly. Yeah. All right. Now the question is, how do we get it to stop after every... 10. What, I mean, here we did, we did it via math. Right? Ty, can you hear me? Could Ty. we maybe have a counter? Mm, in a sense, it, well, let's just, let's put it like this. We could count 10 iterations and then put in a new line. So you could say count plus plus each time through. And then if count equals 10, new line. 
Or we could write an if statement like this that does the mod based on the multiples of 10 relative to the value we're putting in. Which to you sounds easier to do? <laughs> word wrap? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, you here. here. We'll set a counter up here. My, my point is really you can solve this a number of different ways. But this is how I would ap approach it. I would set my counter to zero before I'm in there. Then I would just set count. I can just do that, right? Every time the loop runs, it adds a count. Puts it on the screen, adds one to the counter. Then I can check and see if count equal equals what? 10. 10. Go to new line. And what else would I have to do? You got to reset the counter back to zero. What is the is the plus plus inherent to the for loop? The plus plus is inherent to the count variable. So whatever value it currently is, it increments it by one. That would be the same as saying count equals count plus one, which is what I did in the chapter five exercise. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you know, the other way I could do it is like this. Right, which is already a shorthand. Yeah. This is even shorter hand. This is even shorter hand. Right on. It's too short now. Anything else I would need to do that you guys can think of? Will this work? There's only one way to find out. All right, let's put in three because that's kind of our test value. It did do it. It doesn't look any different than what we did before because because what we did before was correct. That's right. <laughs> but let's try a different number. So let's run it again and let's put in five. Right. So five, these are multiples, right? And that goes up to 500. Is there a way that we could maybe re-express this so that we end on a certain spot, or do we really care? Do we want to express number of display variables, or a we could do variables? Whatever you want. Well, here, here's a thought. You could do number times 10. So what would that do? So I, if I put in 5, okay. it would be 50. Right. Or maybe number times 100. So if I put in 3, it would come up to 300. 300. Okay. Let's just try it. Will that, will that determine the multiplication of the I'll put in 11. It will still go 10 values at a time, but notice where it's stopping. It's also assuring that we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. Now, I would say that this part is highly optional. I'm just showing you a way to make it dynamic. And it does actually set whatever doing it, the nature of multiplication like that variable will be the number of responses that it sets up. Exactly. And what that does is it also forces us to get a consistent number of results regardless of the number. So, all right, folks, I'm going to cap this one here. I think we successfully solved it. <laughs>